and never get out of the survival mode. Even if you even even if you got ten Lexus, you see, they never get out of the survival mode. The whole concept we talk about people that never graduate beyond the survival mode. You see, that's why you got more white people that can grasp this because they are the people that set the standard for survival because they don't take it over the planet. They got time to do other shit than survive. But this is these are these are psychological ramifications. Why we now see why our people, after ten years of hearing all this profound knowledge, can't get it because we're stuck in a survival existence. It is talking. We're talking about survival creatures. We're talking about a disease or a way of life that doesn't allow anything other than that. So any philosophical thing is like. Chinese or Martian Braille. <laughs> you see, it's the, the, the whole grasp of it. Or it's such a thing that's, it, that's the fantasy world. And even in the Sufi mysteries, they say the entire aspect is the realm of imagination. The realm of imagination is real. It is the only reality there is. That's why this, uh, this reality is only based on survival. And that's what the white boy says. It was even in the movie X-File, the X-File movie. The guy said, survival is the ultimate form of theology. That's the white man. Survival is the ultimate form of theology. And he has us on that survival mode. That is the, uh, the only form of theology, you see. So, we're not talking about the mass of people. We're talking about a people that at least can get their mind free for the amount of hours we got up in this shit. You see what I'm saying? And that's, and that's the problem right there. We still, and so we, and to this day, the Afrocentric movement of, a, of 10 years ago based their premise on up you mighty race, which was based on the premise of another movement 20 years prior to that, about 30 years now, your whole civil rights movement, a political movement to get enough people functioning in just this society. But this has nothing to do with that. This has nothing to do with that. If anybody know how to survive is black people. That's why I don't buy that homeless shit. Because we were the masters of survival. All of a sudden, now, I don't know how to get some soup in a damn bowl. Fuck that shit. <laughs> you're the master of survival. You don't survive slavery, but all of a sudden you got black men talking, I don't know what mathematical equation it's going to take to get soup in a bowl. And I'm supposed to buy this? You know, I'm supposed to buy this thing? You mean to tell me, and some of these, see, that's when you know, some of these brothers got college education. You see what I'm saying? And when you go and talk to them, it's not like every homeless person is some slave from uh, uh, 100 years ago. Y'all yeah, suppose, so I don't know. These are people, are brilliant people, but they don't know how to get soup in the bowl, and I'm supposed to buy that shit? When a man with no shoes on can come over here? And we know that the government has them to do all that, but I'm trying to say, come on now. Something wrong when you can't go home. Everybody ought to be able to go home. Now, you done fucked up that bad, you can't go home. You know, you can't go home and be humiliated. You beyond being humiliated in your house, in your mama house, in your room with a post on the wall, and you 50. So you mean to tell me that I can't even be humiliated? I'm beyond being humiliated? <laughs> And I'm supposed to believe this thing here? You know? Even me myself, and I have to I have to say that because I, I me myself, I got a well for some osmosis reason, I got enough food that I can share my damn self now. <laughs> you know? Cause you know, I had one eye on my stove from 2000, beginning of 2000 on into uh, what, about two weeks ago? And one sister brought me a stove with four eyes and shit. And you know what? You know the you know the funny thing. You know they say about you take a fish and put it in the in in in, in the in the fish bowl and the fish swim around and around in the fish bowl and then you take it out and put it in the ocean. It still swim around and around. Right now I go and I hit the damn stove with four eyes. I go to that one little back eye and I say, damn, wait a minute, hold on. 
I said, damn. And I had a job. I said, no, I got to go put on my rice first. If I'm going to eat. And I'll be like, wait a minute, hold on. I got three other eyes now. I don't have to put on the rice first. But after two years of just cooking on one motherfucking eye, I still, and, 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 and I've been doing it all this week, putting on the, it's a little back eye in the rear. And the first thing I reach for is the back eye in the rear. And I got four other eyes and a fucking oven. Because the oven was broke too on the last one. So, so that's really alien and stuff. It might take about three, four days to know I got an oven. Oh damn, that's right, I do have an oven. But I'm just talking about the conditioning. But even that, man, I'm like, look at that, man, I got more food. I'm throwing out food now. You know, you cook one big, you know how it is. I, you know how you cook, you cook for 20. And it's one person, but I, you know, I learned how to cook one way for a, big, for, 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 for a big family, which I only had a few people in my family. I don't know why I cook so much food and stuff like that, no. But my point here is I cook more food than I have to eat. You know, I dump all the rice up in this shit, you know, but the point I'm trying to make here is I know doggone well there's that much food and stuff out here to give away. And also, I don't want to hear this foolishness. Now, going back, I want to get off the, the subject. <laughs> now, going back, the conditioning. And that's why I have to stress this particular information. Let me do one thing. Let me do this right now, because I do this all the time. Let me throw these doggone libations. Okay, first of all, I want to say one thing. This is elixir. This is changing people's lives. It done caught on. It done changed. This is changing people's lives. Now, not only that, I have perfected it. You see what I'm saying? Because I think the first time I told you, you damn near like to kill you. <laughs> that was some potent stuff. But I have perfected it. <laughs> Got niggas mixing shit together and about to die up in there. <laughs> no. But, <laughs> no, this, no, no, serious business. This is, it's not only, this is, you ever see the, 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 the Westerns where they got the guy, he holding up the tonic that's supposed to do every damn thing? Well, we found a tonic that can do everything, you know. Now, there is a method to the madness. It's not just, oh, some liquor in a bottle that's supposed to take care of all the needs. There's a spiritual system to go with it, and that's the, that's the part I didn't tell the people last time. There's two entities to go with it, two sisters to go with this thing. Uh, so we'll call this the two sisters, the elixir of the two sisters. If you ever see, if you ever see, you ever see the Ark of the Covenant, the picture of the Ark of the Covenant, and they got a, on the top of the Ark of the Covenant, they got two angels with wings facing each other. Or oh, you'll see the staff of Tehuda and you'll see the black dot and you'll see two wings. Those wings and you know, all represent two goddesses or two aspects of a Mayatian complex. You know. So this is the real deal, Jimmy. Now, um, uh, well, there's too many damn people, so we're gonna have to tell them how to mix the thing. Uh, uh, either you can come find some, uh -uh. huh? What? Oh, the mix? No. <laughs> Wait, well, well, no, they, no, cause see, no, cause see, they can go get the last damn video and find out how to do it. So, no, cause, but I, but, so I'm going to tell them the right measurement cause the life is too short, but if you want an uh, expert to do it, you can either get with me or the brother R.J. You'll see him with the, with, with the fairs on if he's coming back with his fairs. And we perfected this mixture. Uh, you know, perfected this mixture and all, but um, I perfected this thing. But anyway, to try to understand what this is, um, uh, I had a, a psychic attack that hit me uh, back, and I, I talked about this the last last couple of months, back in uh, August. And so anyway, I had some um, forces that uh, feel that I was getting too far up the ladder of liberation. So what happens here is somebody get me some. You got some paper napkins? I done left my towel again. You got some paper napkins or anything? I had a. But anyway, um, these forces decided that they were going to hit me at one time, and basically they attacked my um, my, my my mouth, and in like a couple of hours, four or five teeth came down infected. So whatever they did was uh was very powerful. But anyway, 
as a result to counter that, this thing came about to mix two aspects, to mix two aspects together, or two aspects of alcohol together to get in a force or a healing force. Now, in order to do that, we come to find out here there's some, um, some, some other information that we need to understand, and that is this. Yeah, cool, that's right. Is this. Number one, um, number one, well, let me pour the libation first before we go into this thing here to get this out of the doggone way. Uh, get this out of the way. Um, let's pour the libations first and get this on out of the way, and then we'll, uh, then we'll go ahead. But while I'm talking, come to find out that the alcohol that we have comes from the mysteries of alchemy, mixing several elements together on the earth to get a fermentation or a putrefaction or a, a transmutation. And so therefore, the alcohol that you see that the Europeans basically brought over here, because mostly in the ancient world you have wines and stuff, but you know, you get a lot of the alcohol things basically related to Europe. Come to find out that these are disciplines that came out of the 16 universities in Europe that were set up by the Moors. So in so many words, all your scotch, your bourbons, your brandies, your, your gins, and even into your American whiskies and Canadian whiskies are disciplines that were given to the European by the Moors. So you learn something new every day. You see what I'm saying? So this is uh, African art. It's an, Afri it's, a, it's an African art. It's about like that, uh, the, about like the story of, um, the story of, um, uh, it's about like the story of um, going down on somebody. You know what I mean by that. <laughs> Oral sex, to be, uh, you know, 